Happy Reclamation Day. Oh my gosh. Guys, Fallout 76 exclusive gameplay footage for you guys. Two quick things. First, a big thank you to Bethesda for bringing me out to West Virginia. I didn't see any Mountain Mamas there, but I was definitely looking. Anyway, went out to West Virginia over to the Greenbrier to play Fallout 76 before most everybody. It was a very unique opportunity, and I'm very thankful to them for that. Also, if you're looking for no commentary footage, that's gonna be over on Baron Von Tactics, another channel that I run, so head on over there if you are after this, if you wanna see some footage without any commentary. And the third point here, I said there was two, and of course there's three now. I have a question for you guys. What do you wanna know about? What do you wanna see? Um, I had the opportunity to play it for three hours with a bunch of other people. There's probably gonna be tons of footage and everyone has their unique experiences because that's the beauty of this game. If you want to go the solo route, you can. You don't have to play multiplayer. You don't have- I mean, you, well, you have to play. You have to be online, right? Uh, but you don't have to necessarily play with other people. There's apparently gonna be 24 people on each server. You can mix in between PvP, PV- well, more- more PvE, obviously, because this is a Fallout game. A little bit of PvP, and then co-op whenever you kind of want to. You can also kind of- hey, I don't really want to participate in PvP. There's that option, too. I personally feel that I'm going to be playing a lot of solo. And on special occasions, or for special events, or when we want to muck about and fire them ICBM nuclear missiles at somebody else and maybe their camp or maybe just to create one of those like fabled uh, fallout areas where a lot of really good loot and a lot of mean beasties will come about due to all the radiation. Um, there's also that possibility as well. So I, I think I think that's the way it's gonna be. I'm gonna be streaming this game. Oh my god am I gonna be streaming this game? I personally stream over on my Facebook page so if you're interested in seeing live streams Head on over there. There will be Let's Play footage over on Baron Von Tactics, and there will be special videos, depending on how how much you guys enjoy it. I know I'm going to be playing this game regardless, but depending on how much you enjoy it, there will be videos here on the main channel. So, let's get into what we got. I've got a lot of stuff for you guys. I'm going to be talking a little bit generally while the gameplay happens, because this is more of a, a feel it out with Baron's Brigade. But I want to see and hear what you guys are most excited to see. In here. Oh, I like that. That kind of worked out nice. So, briefly, the things that I got to do in the game were I got to fight a Scorch Beast. Scorch Beasts come from these fissures in the ground where basically the Scorch Beasts are like, uh, I guess like growing and, you know, multiplying underground. And finally, when it, their area gets overly populated, this fissure breaks and they escape out into the wild. And there's a big, bad Scorch Beast. It, it makes the Death Claw look like a teddy bear. A giant teddy bear with hands that will kill you, you know, and they've got these big claws that cause death, thus the name. But you know what? It does make it look like the Death Claw ain't the biggest and baddest out there. And that excites me. I'm pretty excited about that. Now, this Fissure, um, from what I understand, is one of the only ways to close it is using an ICBM, the nukes that you can get in the game. And yes, we did get to see the nuking going on. I'll talk about that a little bit. Another thing that we got to see and experience was power armor um, and fusion cores. We got a little bit of that. Now, um, weapons and uh, armor sets are capped via your level, but we did get to run around in the power armor exoskeleton without any of the plates on it, but it was still pretty cool. Got to see some death claws. Not only did we get to see some death claws, but we saw a death claw attack the green briar, which is basically, I believe, and I think many believe, where the seat of the American government will attempt to revive itself. Um, as it's Reclamation Day 2102, and I believe it's 25 years after the Great War, when a nuclear apocalypse covered the United States. When um, basically after the Chinese and the the U.S. kind of got after it, Operation Anchorage, man, I wanna I wanna talk about that at some point in another video, where I'll be using a different game to try to recreate that battle. So if you're interested in that, hey, came to the right place, there, might. Um, yes, Death Claws versus so since the Green Bar, it's it's the unique and kind of like the <clears throat> capital 
of of the area of the region it is one of the more it's one of the focal points on the map the map is beautiful the map is the biggest they say they've ever done i got to explore it for three hours and i i was kind of going in one main direction <laughs> and i didn't even get to the end and obviously we were we were distracted you know we were doing all kinds of things right like seeing the mothman museum seeing the nuka cola plant Visiting the Greenbrier, including its golf courses. Watching the Deathclaw fight off the Robo Guards. So there is a big robotic army, a big garrison protecting the Greenbrier in the absence of any human overlords, right? Or any proper government, which is going to be very, very interesting. Now, there's a lot of cool stuff, right? So we're going to be seeing those locations are kind of like the, uh, the uh, highlights. Um, there's going to be a little bit on crafting, and there's going to be a little bit on PvP, as well as the wanted and bounty system happening. So if there's any particular area you want to see more of, all the footage is going to be going up on Baron Von Tactics, right? But what I want to know is, what do you want to see here? What more do you want to see? Because I can show it off to you, because I've got three hours of footage, and I'm only giving you kind of like the one hour, you know, best bits and highlights kind of a thing of the, the parts that I thought were the most interesting to convey, and I thought a one-hour video was pretty decent for, you know, something like this. I didn't, I didn't know if it was proper to just dump all three hours in one giant video. Um, so, hey, could be wrong. Yo no sé nada. All right, so let me know what you want. Now let's get into some stuff, right? So the premise of the game is it's Reclamation Day 2102. The people in Vault 76... The vault opens, they go forth out into the world, they go exploring, right? Well, where's the overseer? That's kind of the main quest, is you are basically following in the overseer's footsteps who left the vault prior to you to basically see what's going on. Now, it's 25 years after the bombs fall in 2102, so this is the first vault to open its doors to the post-apocalyptic United States of America. I don't know why I didn't use an American accent while saying United States of America, but you know what? Eccentricities are what eccentricities do, right? So, it's a control vault. That's pretty, that's pretty key. So, the people weren't affected uh, or weren't tested on by vault tech like almost what isn't it every other vault that you've ever come out of in a fallout game has been um not a control vault so that's gonna be interesting control vault just means they like i said it's i probably beat this like a dead horse is uh there's just no testing done on the people right there's it's a control you need a, a baseline for the scientific method so as you guys obviously saw, the uh, special, the card-based system, is it's different than in the past. Special was done um, with numerical statistics, right? You could put more stats in and they affected things, right? In S-P-E-C-I-A-L, right? Now this way, you kind of get to pick your area, but like, uh, oh, do you want, I focused on charisma. And I got cards as a result, so I got the certain level which opened up certain cards. So it's a card-based system, which is going to be very unique and different relative to how we've done the specials in the past, right? And it's exciting, right? This is a totally new experience. Fallout went away from, you know, hey, let's try something different than just like these beautiful and rich single-player stories. Now I think you get a, we're still going to have those experiences. Um, but we're not going to have, but we're going to have the option of basically playing with friends and also playing against enemies that are people that are not as, say, predictable or maybe as scripted, you know, or as story based, right? It's going to allow for other narratives and subplots and rivalries and, you know, you may create a nemesis, you may create, you may find your next best friend. I mean, Lord knows what you're going to find out there in the wasteland when it's multiplayer. Right? But what does that mean since it's it's multiplayer? Well, it's persistent, right? So the two biggest things I noticed um, as far as gameplay was concerned, and they were kind of... <laughs> uh, I, I was a little frustrated with them at the beginning because I was not prepared for it, which was dumb because I should have been prepared for it, was I can't pause. So what does that mean? I can't just open up my Pip-Boy and casually be like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'm about to die, so I'm going to need to 
pap pop this stim pack use a rat away before because i want to make sure i get the most out of the stim pack oh i'm a little hungry maybe eat some uh maybe eat some salisbury steak or some potable water because you know there's this new system of uh hunger and thirst right the survival aspects of it all right and then uh yeah so i can't do that anymore so i was definitely at certain instances i was i was spamming spamming the stim packs and there's no vats in real time and that actually <laughs> i allowed that to confuse me for quite a while and i don't think i realized that i could still use vats once i upped my uh you know levels in the requisite special categories to allow me to do that um i didn't know to use vats like i was still almost like stupidly waiting for that beautiful green pop-up Pip boy overlay to basically point out, oh, do I want to aim for his his left arm or his right leg? Maybe if I shoot off his leg, that'd be kind of funny because he couldn't chase me. Maybe it'd just kill him right away, right? And so you weren't able to do that. Um, that was just something that you we're gonna have to get used to um, in the new system. And I'm excited for it. I'm excited for the new challenges, right? And so yeah, for me, the two big things gameplay wise were no pausing in the Pip boy. And no, v and and vats is in real time. It doesn't slow things down, which is to kind of be expected for a persistent multiplayer-based game, right? Um, other things were really cool. Is that you can play in a group, and you can all be running and just having your own experience. Like you could you could be in a group, and then you can fast travel for free because uh, fast travel between yourself and locations uh, uses caps in the game. So actually, now that I think about it right now, kind of after the fact, hindsight being a little more 2020, or a little closer to 2020 at least, since this is beta, things can and will change, but I, this, I, this isn't going to change. And the beta was actually, that brings up another point, the beta was very substantive. I think this is the, uh, there's some things that are going to need to be fixed. They were saying how we'd be in some places the maps and frame rates would drop, right? But other than that, like, which they're going to, work on presumably and presumably fix um is where was it oh man ADD really really can uh really can be quite fun <laughs> at times but yeah I have no idea where I was going with that where was I going with that anyway but what I, the point I was trying to make was that uh um yeah now I know where I was going with this yes thank you thank you please keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times because things get a little weird um, is that it'll encourage playing with other people so because of the fast travel system I believe since it's free to uh, fast travel to a friendly uh, teammate as opposed to a uh, named location that you discovered you have to discover them to be able to travel them um, so don't think you can just skip to Deathclaw Island you know and uh, battle it out there right as you exit Fallout 76 on Reclamation Day um, so yeah, there are definitely advantages, but I don't think you necessarily have to. Oh, I mean, actually, you definitely don't have to. And I remember asking a lot of the de 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 the developers and um, the people at Bethesda who've put hours and hours and hours into playing the game, which probably for both fun and for testing. I mean, by the time it gets released, they probably have beaten it once or twice, I'd say, on average for most of them. Um, at least the main quest, because that's the beauty of it, right? Is uh, they were saying that most of them were like, yeah, I actually prefer to play solo. And then for specific events and for certain tasks that I want to accomplish, I then kind of bring in, you know, a crew. I bring in the boys and we go out there. And so I was like, okay, because after, after like just in the in the first thirty minutes, I was kind of like, I actually wish I kind of could go solo on this. Um, and most of us did actually. One of us was playing the main storyline quest, which for me, I was like, I'm gonna save that for beta, because beta comes out early on Xbox, about a week early, and then it'll be on PC and PS4. So myself personally, oh yeah, real quick caveat: if you if you haven't been able to tell, oh man, I should have said this 15 minutes ago, is that my um ability <laughs> on a on a on a gamepad on the xbox controller is not nearly as uh, competent or as skilled or even as just silky smooth as it would be on the pc you know with a keyboard and mouse so uh combat for me was kind of challenged at times in part because i was i haven't played a a, a 
uh, first person or third person, since you can switch back and forth, shooter on the uh, on a console, and Lord knows how long it's been, right? Um, so yeah, that was I apologize for that, and I should have put a little text prompt at the beginning of the video to be like, I don't play on console. Apologies, but yes, I'm I'm planning on playing the bejesus out of this game. Um, I've I. My first Fallout game, real quick, just my personal experience, was Fallout 3, and then Fallout 4. I, like, uh, school, work, all kinds of things, basically really bad excuses, right? Like, real-life stuff, uh, has kept me from playing a lot of the Fallouts. And you'd be like, everyone has the same amount of time, Baron. You're just not prioritizing things, right? And I would have to agree with you on this. But I'm avidly looking forward to... Getting to play and to beat and to really put lots of hours in this game. They were saying that the main quest, the developers were saying that on average for the average player, the main quest is going to be about 40 hours of content. And that's, that's assuming you're not stopping to do any of the plethora of sub-quests, right? They're also going to have daily and weekly events. Which, uh, I, I think events slash quest missions, you know, are, call, are kind of all interchangeable. There will be daily and weekly content added to the game, which I think is great. You know, lots of multiplayer games do that, and I think that's fresh. Speaking of what, quote, a lot of other games are doing, or some other games are doing, uh, I got to do a little roundtable with the developers, uh, myself and a number of the other people who participated in this event. And we all got to ask it a number of questions, right, and get some answers. And one of mine was, out of curiosity, I wanted to know, because, you know, the, it's called Appalachia. They don't call it West Virginia, right? Appalachia isn't just West Virginia. It goes up uh, a great majority of the East Coast, right? So, in theory, you could expand the map, right? And so I asked that question to developers, and they said, hey, I'm just going to be frank with you. You're awesome, and you're our favorite, okay? We we think you're the best. No, but in all seriousness, they were saying that it is possible. Anything is possible. You know, they were encouraged to answer, you know, questions like that with, Hey, anything is possible, it's just not in our plans right now. Right? So then my next question, the follow-up was, Well, hey, what about changing the map? Would you ever substantively change a specific area? Like, say, Deathclaw Island, or um, the Cranberry Fields, or the Greenbrier, or, you know, things like that, like maybe later time events. And I mean, hey, you know what? Not everybody likes the game, but it may be the hottest thing out there right now until this game comes out. Fortnite does that pretty well in terms of keeping things fresh by changing the map. Granted, that's just like a battle royale and it's totally different. Fallout Battle Royale confirmed. I guess you could kind of do that. You could probably make a custom battle royale if you got everyone on the server to agree to something. I don't know how it'd work. That's not where I was trying to go with this point. But I asked about changing the map, and they, they were a little more um, open to that than expanding the map. They said, hey, once again, anything is possible, but we have thought about stuff like that. So that would be interesting, and it, it does make sense. And that's is out, like, changing the map, quote-unquote, right, outside of the obvious. The ICBM nuclear missiles, which you can target specific areas, and they will heavily irradiate that area. Right, and then um, as a result, the monsters that are around there, as well as resources, are very, very elevated. Just like the radiation levels. Get your rat away today. Buy one, get one free over on Bearmont Tactics, where the other footage is, or my Facebook stream. Hey, no, I don't have any rat away there. Just more gameplay of Fallout 76 and the other Fallouts and stuff like that that I'll be streaming in the build up to the launch. I'm very excited for this game. Um, for me, in the second half of 2018, my top three games um, are Fallout 76, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, and if Tabs comes out. I don't know if it will, but if it does, it would be in the top three, obviously. Very excited for that. But that's not what we're talking about. But it's like... So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be putting significant amounts of time in this game. So if you want to join me for any of those journeys, whether they be the kind of more specialized videos here on Baron Von Games, 
Let's Play footage over on Baron Von Tactics on YouTube, or my Facebook stream if you want to be part of the live streams. That'll be on Baron Von Games over on my Facebook page. I'm very excited for it. I've got a lot of stuff to show off for you, more footage still. Um, some of the things I wasn't able to see, I'm trying to get, you know, more, more stuff to show off to you guys, and I'll be doing that. But obviously, you know, come, what is it, October 23rd? October 23rd, my lord. That be the time that the Fallout 76 beta on the Xbox comes out. Tuesday! It's gonna be a beautiful day. I wonder how many people are gonna be taking off from work. I wonder how many people took off from work to just, like, watch all the footage dump today. I'm very excited for this game. It's gonna be great. So, we've still got quite a bit of footage for you guys to watch. So, I'm gonna shut up and enjoy it. And please, in the comments below, let me know what more you want to see, because I've got more footage to show off to you guys. Alright? Enjoy.
Attention citizens, nuclear strike imminent. Please exit the area at your earliest convenience. Set up her camp down the road to the south. 